In this video, we're going to take a look at the basic wireless management setup for our new Cisco 9800 series wireless controller. At this point, we have the controller up and running with one access point enabled, all radios enabled on the access point, but nothing is established to set up our clients or the overall uh, wireless LANs for our solution. It's just going to be in open operating mode, really both set of the controller and the access point in their native day zero configuration. So in this design, we've looked at the uh, interface view. We can look at all of our feature functionality and configure a lot of this manually with all the capabilities we do want uh, out of a Cisco wireless solution. But if we scroll down to the very bottom of this uh, configuration flyout menu, we are met with some wireless setup options. We have a basic setup and an advanced setup. Uh, I'm going to click on the basic setup and we'll look at both, but we're going to focus on our basic configuration here. First off, in the basic setup, we are met with a pretty open screen that says, well, let's just get going and add this environment and it'll walk us through kind of a guided step of piece by piece of adding our networks, wireless LANs, and locations to assign our access points to this controller so they can start actually doing and providing data and connectivity for our wireless clients. If we look at the advanced setup, we now have a little bit more information about what we're going to be involved with here because there's more things we actually get involved with doing. We will set up different profiles, policies, and tags when it comes to our wireless LAN, site information of how the access points join our solution, and then radio policies that we want to permit that maybe go beyond just the default settings that are out there for low, typical, or high client densities. Once we satisfy some or all of the mandatory or optional settings that will walk us through all the phases of this controller, we'll then apply them to the access points that are part of our design. In this case, we just have one access point we can tag our stuff to, and we'll walk through this when we look at the defaults uh, and uh, setup for the advanced setting. But for this design, we're going to look at the basic setting that we're going to be focusing on here. So if we also look at the uh, settings, we can also go from the dashboard. There is a setup here with this little you know, radio setting and wireless setup widget wheel. We can click that icon from anywhere in this dashboard or in this um, configuration setup and click on basic or advanced. For our purposes, again, we're looking at the basic setting. I will click on that and now we're brought back here as well. So just want to point out the two ways to navigate to our wireless setup settings. We can go from the always persistent navigation menu up here, hovering over the wireless setup, basic or advanced, or configuration, flyout window, very bottom, basic or advanced. Let's get rolling on that basic setup here. I'm going to click the add button, and now we're met with the settings that we're going to be responsible for getting this network up and running. So in this case, what is the location that I'm running this into? Well, it's going to be our business transformation center. And we'll call it BTC for short. The description will be our BTC location. The location type, because the controller is in my uh, facility, will be a local configuration. And the client density, I'm actually going to move to a low density because it is our test environment kind of in our uh, non-corporate mode. So I'm not going to have really many or any clients on here on a regular basis. So I'm going to move that to our low setting and it will automatically apply the RF and radio credentials that are built into the controller by default with that low parameter setting. Again, taking a lot of that manual lifting and putting it into Cisco best practice mode. That's all we do on the general page. Pretty much build our location out that we're going to run this wireless setup within. Now within this location, what wireless networks do we want to have? In this case, I'm going to go through and say, well, I have nothing pre-established because we're at a day zero configuration. I'm going to define a new one. <coughs> Excuse me. Once I go and define a new one, I actually have to go through another pop-out window that will tell me how to add the wireless naming conventions to our solution. I'm going to say the profile for this one will be Catalyst, highlighting the Catalyst operating system for our deployment. Automatically, our profile will now be our SID name, which I will allow for the solution. 
is our first network, so it's me ID number one. By default, the status is disabled, but the broadcast is enabled. I will disable that just for security's sake until we get everything up and ready. I can hard code this to be 2.4 or 5 specific, or in our radio case, we'll say all clients are able to join of any radio structure. I'm then met with my security settings. I can go through here and be as specific or um, tight with my security setup as I need to be. In this case, we're going to keep it very generic to our WPA and WPA2 settings, or we can actually do WPA2 and WPA3, or if we really wanted to, WEP still exists. Um, we'll keep it at WPA2 for now. Uh, we can always change this as our environment dictates WPA3 requirements. Protected management frame in WPA2 has a um, option, disabled or required. We can set that up or disable it. It's not a mandatory feature like you might see if you go to WPA3 settings. Protected management frame does become a little bit more um, of a requirement or a tagged feature, something you want to take advantage of when you move to that realm. It is something that you do want to look at and is something that is more customizable and, and functional within that support. But in looking at WPA2 structured environments, um, we will keep it at the default disabled structure for now. Our policy, we'll keep it WPA2. Uh, we're gonna go with a pre-shared key because we're keeping this very local in our test environment. We're not gonna be running any type of authoritative uh, 802.1x or AAA functionality. And we're gonna keep our, our credentials uh, Cisco 321. Make sure that is the way we want it and we'll keep it open and friendly. Uh, we can always create anything we want from a layer 3 setting. We can do full policy creation there, enable our AAA functionality if we're going to move into that realm, as well as any of our advanced functionality we'd find uh, for our wireless settings will exist here for max connections per uh, wireless LAN and a lot of different feature functionality we can do to really dial in this network as we have familiarized ourselves with the AeroS config those features and functions are present here in the Catalyst config as well. Once I satisfy these credentials I will apply. Now it will automatically have soaked in my Catalyst configuration. We now can apply that to different VLANs or VLAN groups if we have established them. Right now, I just have the VLAN group 100 that I have established for my wireless controller. That means that I have no other VLAN tagged that I could apply to this specific environment if I need to go and do that. So for our deployment, I would want to create a separate VLAN solution set for this environment. So I'm actually going to bounce out of this for now because that is something that I do want to set up for this solution. So how we do that is going back to our configuration, and then we have a layer two configuration setting for VLANs or VTP. In this case, our environment is not part of a VTP domain, and in fact, we don't really have any other VLANs set up at this point. So I'm gonna go add a VLAN. I'll make it VLAN 10. and let it activate it for our environment, we'll apply that to our device. So now we have added a VLAN for this device to be part of our overall network. Uh, ideally, you would want to have it tied to a VTP if that is something you have running in your environment, because uh, that just makes a, a connecting all your VLANs much more easy. Uh, but for now, we're keeping it at a very basic, you know, self-administered site type deployment of having this VLAN 10 be available uh, for this location. Because nothing was saved in my original design, I have to go back and run that through one more time. So I'll call this my BTC, BTC location. Add our wireless networks. Now, because we did build the wireless LAN in our prior configuration, that does exist here still. So the settings we did apply the first time do still exist in the overall structure of the controller, but because the basic location setup is not completed to the fullest, we never hit apply, our initial work to build our location just didn't exist. 
So now I'll go back in and build out my VLANs, and VLAN 10 does now exist to connect to the rest of my environment. If I have any ACLs built or quality of service settings I want to apply, we can do that here. In this case, we'll make it a server level. If we have any ACLs we want to apply here, we can do that specifically or define a new one. Again, giving us a lot of great credentials just from these setup flyout windows uh, for our settings. We'll keep everything as default on here because we are in a local uh, controller mode. We'll add that, and now we've applied this wireless name with Catalyst across the board here. And because all of our wireless LAN settings and security parameters were already built prior, our policy is now ready to roll for this specific location. When the last step we have to do in this basic configuration will be just applying our found access point, which we've seen from the dashboard in our configuration. We can click on that access point, or if we had several that we have the controller discovered but not applied to a specific network, uh, we can select many or several. In this case, we just have one, so we'll select the one that we have. And the little arrow will pop up to say, yes, this is the access point that I want to have joined from my wireless controller, now applied to this specific location, and inherit all those settings for the wireless LAN security location for this deployment. I will now hit apply, and that can be part of our solution. If I didn't want to do it from an access point list or I couldn't find it, I can specifically type the MAC address here. I can do the uh, AP import if I had a whole file that was saved um, offline. We can import that here. Again, avoids just a manual click of hundreds of access points you want to deploy. We can actually have a file created for here or MAC addresses, or we can just click the few we might have in our environment. We will click apply, and now we have a saved setting in our basic setup that this location, for what it is, and the access points tied to it. Now we can go into it, see the provisioning, and see the access points, and we can delete it if we're unsatisfied with what we want. We can apply it, again, if we want to make any setting changes, or we let it go for where it is. And now we'll go back into our configuration, and we go into our tags and profiles. We look at our wireless LANs. And now we can see the access points that we had here. Catalyst was disabled. I will now enable it. We can see the status goes from red to green. It is up. And all the settings we had prior applied here in the initial flyout window can be modified here under the same structure just now found from configuration wireless LANs, even though we can build that uh, manually in this fashion we had it kind of automatically flowed from the basic configuration there. Now if we look at our monitoring, we can look at our AP uh, functionality to make sure we can look at any clients that might have joined with our new network radios. In this case, we've not had anybody join yet. Uh, but it's nice to see if you go back to our dashboard, we do have our wireless network administered. It is up and running with one access point, and now it keeps discovering more and more access points and clients that are rogues in our environment as we look to continue uh, the next phase of our wireless configuration.